So it was another successful year for Dreamforce in San Francisco after a warning came that this year's convention could be its last in the city as Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff is asking now why the city can't always be this beautiful. So joining us now to talk about this and answer that question and see what else is happening in the city is San Francisco Mayor London Breed. Thank you for coming back in of person course. here during Crime 4 News at 3. We appreciate it. So Salesforce, the Dreams Force, was a success. No issues of crime. Homeless camps were all cleared out. Did you think what Mark Benioff said was a little bit of a taunt when he said, you know, why can't the city always look like this? He was just kidding, just so you know. Um, but in, 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 in all seriousness, um, to be clear, the area that we're talking about, there aren't 10 encampments in that area, in the, in the um, downtown Union Square area, the, that sort of area. We, especially for conventions and visitors, um, we focus a lot of time and attention and resources on trying to keep it clean and trying to keep it safe. Uh, I think that uh, Mark Benioff just wanted to make sure that we were taking care of business, but more importantly, he's a San Franciscan, he loves mm -hmm. the city, and he wants to make sure that the city feels like this all the time. And me, as a lover of San Francisco myself, that's how I feel. That's why we are out in the streets every day working to help people get treatment, to help get them indoors. We have behavioral health beds, we have shelter beds. We want to be able to get people off the streets into uh, places where they can get help, when they can get support. It is not as simple as you go to this bed, you go to this bed. There's all these mm -hmm. different injunctions and courts and legal things that are in the way of that. Uh, but at the end of the day, since I've been mayor, since 2018, we've been able to help almost 10,000 people exit homelessness. Okay, I want to jump on that because Gavin Newsom has kind of gotten involved in this now. He says it wants to go all the way to the Supreme Court. Do you support that? And that, that this case isn't even going to be heard until spring of next year. Well, he stole that from me, by the way. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so yes, you do support it going that far. I think we need to go as far as we need to go because my my philosophy is, if you are on the streets, and whatever your issue is, and we have a bed for you to bring you indoors, we should be able to force you to go indoors. Mm -hmm. We should not be able to allow people to live on our streets. Uh, and that's really the fundamental thing here. We, we, San Francisco is a compassionate city. We spend billions of dollars to help uh, with services and programs and support uh, to get people treatment, to get them off the streets. And we know it's complicated, especially for someone struggling with addiction. But what we have allowed to, 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 to tolerate it, to allow it to occur, and to say, well, you know, we need to do a hands-off approach, that's not a solution. Uh, it's not okay to let people live out in the streets. There are a lot of seniors out on the streets. There are a lot of folks who are out there uh, in, in really horrible conditions. One of the most recent encampments that I went to where rats were coming out of a lot of the areas where people were actually sleeping. Mm -hmm. So it's not okay. It's a public health issue. And at the end of the day, we need to do everything we can to uh, try and get people off the streets. And, and that may mean force and that may me be uncomfortable. But at this point, it's necessary if we're going to be able to turn San Francisco go around in the Tenderloin and South of Market communities. So let's jump back though to lessons learned from Dreamforce yeah. and cleaning it up there. We're about to host APEC coming up in November. It's, San Francisco will be on an international stage where there are lessons learned from this year's Dreamforce as far as clearing out you know, any violence that could be happening in that section that you'll be able to apply to this bigger stage that's happening in November? Well, just so you know, for all of our conventions, including Salesforce, uh, Dreamforce for the last over 10 years, um, we have been very aggressive about protecting and supporting the area, um, the hotels, the Moscone Center, and for the most part, it has been really successful because 311 usually responds in 72 hours. We cut that time down to really target the area to keep it clean, mm -hmm. uh, to keep it safe. It didn't mean that there were no people out on the streets that didn't have challenges. It just, you know, we didn't have any major safety issues as a result of a lot of our hard work. Um, but our hope is that something very similar will happen with APEC. Uh, but it's going to be on an international stage mm -hmm. differently than ever before. So no pressure. The the Secret Service, the FBI, all of the different you know law enforcement agencies on the national and a state level will be engaged aggressively on San Francisco. But also we'll have a lot of law enforcement from other jurisdictions around uh, the Bay Area. So it, it's going to be a lot of lot more support 
for APEC because of the various leaders from mm -hmm. the 21 economies that are going to be participating. We'll have over a thousand foreign press so that they can get their own experience of San Francisco and tell their own stories from being here rather than a quick viral video. So my hope is that APEC will be a, a chance to put San Francisco on an international map in a way that allows for the press and others to tell a different story of San Francisco. It is a big deal. We haven't had an international event of this magnitude in San Francisco since 1945 when the United Nations was established. So here we are welcoming foreign leaders from all over the world, our president, and, and it's going to be a great time in the city and our plan is to make sure that we do everything we can so that every delegate or person that's participating in APEC has a wonderful experience. The police department just put out a look for, they're trying to find recruit, recruits in Texas. Mm -hmm. Why are they going to Texas to try to find police officers for the San Francisco Police Department? So the police department has stepped up its, uh, its recruitment efforts. Uh, at, we were struggling with a lot of recruitment. Uh, we do a lot of recruitment here locally uh, in San Francisco and in California. Uh, but we also uh, spend resources to go to other states uh, to recruit people to work for the department. We are seeing an increase in the number of applications that are coming into the department. And at the end of the day, San Franciscans, they want more law enforcement. Uh, we have a lot of great policies on the books in order to protect San Franciscans. And, but, but at the end of the day, we want to be able to get officers out on the streets mm -hmm. uh, to do what's necessary to serve and protect the public. The San Francisco Sheriff's Department, the union, put out some series of tweets, X's today, saying that the city has cut some critical funding for its department, including some equipment, and then kind of took a jab at you and, and, and wondered if you had a chance to see what they had said and if you could respond. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see what they said, and I'm not sure what they're talking about, but, you know, sometimes uh, politics come into play with some of these things. Um, this is not budget season. They've not reached out and had a conversation with my office about it. Uh, but I do want to be clear, the union uh, for the sheriff's deputies is one thing, but the actual deputies is quite another. Mm -hmm. And I want to appreciate the work that they have been doing day in and day out to serve and protect the city. They've actually provided some additional support for the challenges that we've been dealing with in the UN Plaza and the South of Market areas. And as we quickly run out of time here, you did say that you were trying to like cut some red tape to try to build new housing in the city, some 800 new units. Can you explain to us a little bit about what's happening with the permit process and building and how quickly these new houses can be built? Well, we have a lot of different layers of things going on with housing, but more recently, um, what we have said time and time again to the voters is when the inclusionary fee, which requires a certain number of affordable units on site or within the area uh, to be built or to be paid for, um, we were able to look at the data to show that projects are not economically feasible and developers were having a really tough time getting financing and building their projects. Uh, we worked together with the Board of Supervisors to uh, change that fee structure to make these projects more economically feasible. And we expect from even this one piece of legislation that some of those delayed projects are going to be um, moving forward in San Francisco. We have other, as of right, uh, policies and state legislation that worked its way through the process. Big shout out to Senator Scott Weiner for all his hard work on the state level. Ultimately, we need to build 82,000 units over the next eight years. And, but to be clear, people are like, where is all that going to go? Yeah. San Francisco has over 50,000 units already approved, all ready to go. And for one reason or another, whether it's CEQA appeals or delays or different layers of policies, it's just unbelievable how much bureaucracy gets in the way of doing exactly what the people of San Francisco wants us to do, and that is build more housing so that we can be able to house the homeless, so that people who grow up in San Francisco can afford to live here, so that journalists and other folks in various industries don't have to cross the bridge to come over to work in San Francisco. We need to get this housing built, and we need to get it now, and we have a lot of different policies that are in the pipeline, and housing policies are really popular now, so momentum is with us, and I'm looking forward to seeing us break ground on a lot of projects. Mayor Linda Breed, thank you for joining us. I believe we're out of time, but we appreciate you coming in. Here to join us live during Crown for News thank at 3. You. We'll see you again soon. All right. All right, next time we're going to get more time. But now we'll take a break and be right back.